Hello everyone, and um, in this video today I wanted to talk about the Ukrainian conflict, the Ukrainian war that's been going on for the last four months, as I feel like I did not want to immediately talk about it after the invasion in February, and I wanted to give some time, let some time pass and see the events unfold, and see what would happen from the beginning and until now and this is I feel like the time where I wanted to kind of give my opinion talk about this war talk about Russia and its culture and its history and what sort of led up to this and what the future is for Ukraine and for much of Europe because after about more than more than four months Russia has pretty much been in a position where they've been taking the eastern parts of Ukraine and they failed in t trying to take Kiev, they failed in trying to take U the northern parts of Ukraine and taking Odessa, but they have succeeded in taking the Donbass area. As of making this video, they have taken Severodonetsk, which was a major city, and they've taken Lashenk, and they've taken the entire region, the Luhansk area. And this is of making this video they've sort of succeeded in taking major parts of pro-Russian areas of Ukraine and they're going to probably continue to make, to take the Donetsk region um, and really conquer it and consolidate it. And the thing is is that I feel that seeing what's what's happening right now which is a pretty awful situation as we're seeing examples of genocide mass murder I mean human rights violations that are occurring I mean obviously this is a complete and disgusting war that's going on and what Vladimir Putin is doing is similar to what Adolf Hitler was doing in the sort of his fascist goals in sort of expanding what he considers is the new Russian Empire and there's actually a term that has been spreading online which is called Rushism and there's other ways of pronouncing it but this is a very specific term that Ukrainians have been using and labeling against uh, Russians and it started to become more, much, a much more popular term it's known as Rashism or Rushism which is uh, been used by a number of scholars, politicians, publicists to describe the political ideology and social practices of the Russian authorities during the rule right now of Vladimir Putin. And it has been used to label the kind of undemocratic system that exists in Russia, this sort of national a nationality cult that's in Russia which is mixed with ultranationalism and a cult of personality, this sense that Russia is this great uh, power. Russia is the sort of uh, third Rome and needs to expand and needs to be imperialistic and take back the territories that belongs to it and it's sort of entitled to taking back these kind of lands. There's also this kind of, it's kind of, it feeds into this kind of irredentist viewpoint of, of history that these lands cannot exist separate from Russia. They can't, uh, Ukraine isn't, shouldn't be recognized as, as its own independent nation. It is part of Russia. It's not unique as a independent state, as it's an extension of the Russian state. And a lot of these ideas also come from this Russian philosopher known as Alexander Dugin, who has been characterized as Putin's brain or Putin's philosopher. Dugin has been sort of important in sort of being the brains behind the Russian annexation of Crimea and behind the invasion of Ukraine this year. Dugan calls for sort of this totalitarian Russian empire to control the Eurasian continent from Dublin to Vladivostok and to challenge America as the leading power in the world. He actually wrote a book that I believe is called like the land power of, of Europe or the land power of Russia which I'll throw up on the screen right now and he supports this concept of Russia becoming a land empire while in contrast with the United States the United States is sort of a sea power that's why he calls it sort of America's Atlanticism and he sees America as really the immediate threat to Russia's power as it wants to expand and become this Eurasian superpower and really consolidate, really just absorb all the nations that surround it and really push America to the side as the world leading power as it destroys its hegemony 
And that's what is sort of insane about Alexander Dugan's ideas, because they can be characterized as very much fascist in this new form of Russian fascism that's spreading across the nation, that has been adopted by the Russian military, the police, the politicians. And it's kind of crazy that Russia's, I guess, imperialistic ambitions have always been exi existent. There's been, of course, the Russian conquest of Siberia, which took place in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. This is one of the most kind of like prominent periods of time when Russia really expanded itself to to this massive, massive, humongous nation state that it is now. And when the Tsar felt that it was sort of in a position where it was entitled to kind of spread, the Russians really sort of pushed out the, the Khanate of Sabir and became kind of a loose political structure of vassalages that were being undermined by the activities of Russian explorers. Although outnumbered, the Russians pressured the various family-based tribes into changing their loyalties and establishing dis distant forts from which they conducted raids. This was an important period of time for which they could gain natural resources. The annexation of Siberia and the Far East to Russia was resisted by local residents, of course, and took place against the backdrop of fierce battles between the indigenous peoples and the Russian Cossacks, who often committed atrocities towards the indigenous peoples. So, similar to the United States conquering much of the nation and stripping a land away from sort of the Native Americans, the Russians also had this sort of feeling of that it was their destiny to conquer much of the Russian lands and take it from the indigenous population through force and to sort of wipe out and exterminate any ethnic or indigenous groups that stood in their way. There's also a sort of event in history that's not talked about and I think is important to understanding the Russian mindset is also the Circassian Genocide, which was the Russians' systematic mass murder ethnic cleansing and expulsion of about 80 to 97 percent of the Circassian population, around 800,000 to 1.5 million during the Russian Circassian War. They felt that these people who were major who many of them were Muslim, they saw them as like many other ethnic groups that they've seen in Russia, as sort of this group that were sort of subhuman in, in many way. And they did not see them as legitimate and they wanted to exterminate this people group. And I could go on to other many genocides that have occurred within Russian history. But again, what I'm trying to sort of inform people about is that this is part of their history. This is part of their culture of just going about and not recognizing these sort of people groups within their borders, these sort of other types of Asian or Central Asian ethnic groups, and basically exterminating them. During Stalin's reign, he engaged in what was known as de cossackization which was systemic repressions against Cossacks of the Russian Empire. And it happened over a kind of immediate period of time, which Stalin was oppressing many other ethnic groups minorities and engaging in forced deportations of millions of people. And so you see this history of forced migration, conquest, and also mass murder. I mean the most notable one that has been popularized recently is the sort of Holodomor, which has been brought up because of the invasion of Ukraine and needs to be addressed and needs to be looked into because again there has been uh, denial by Russians and by other characters who stated that this was not a sort of man-made genocide. This was just a famine that occurred that killed millions of Ukrainians when in fact there's a lot of evidence that this was intentional and that the Soviets basically did intentionally try to starve millions of Ukrainians in sort of their attempt to undermine their sort of nationalist movements that were occurring at that time as the Soviet Union was expanding and they were trying to basically eliminate all threats to their state. I could go on about all these sort of horrible atrocities that had happened and I also wanted to sort of talk about the kind of main comparison that people are making between Russia and the winter war that happened in 1939 to 1940. So the Soviets made several demands including that Finland cede substantial border territories in exchange for land elsewhere claiming security reasons primarily the protection of Leningrad from the Finnish border. 
when Finland re refused, the Soviets invaded. And over a course of months, what happened next was the fact is that the, so the Soviets took an insane amount of casualties as the Finns put up a very much great defense uh, for their nation and they were able to fight back against numerically superior forces these guys who were sort of ill-equipped and ill-trained for the kind of ter uh, for the terrain that was in Finland where the Finnish soldiers were capable of fighting back and inflicting heavy losses through ambushes and through cutting off their resources and their supply lines and launching effective counterattacks but while we see in the Ukraine this is sort of happening in a way where the Ukrainians are putting up a steady defense you have to understand, during the Winter War, even though when the Russians took substantial losses, in the end, they did conquer much of the territory. I mean, in which, like, Finland ceded 9% of its territory towards the Soviet Union. And this is what's probably going to happen in the Ukraine. And this is my prediction, and it's pretty sad, is that the Ukrainian state, even though that we're providing them with advanced rocket systems, anti-tank missiles, and so on and so forth, What's happening is that the Ukrainians are losing more and more territory as the Russians are able to use their heavier artillery and rocket systems against them in eastern Ukraine. Also, eastern Ukraine's sort of geography, its topography, is very much the type of uh, terrain that the Russians have sort of trained for, this kind of flat land, kind of train their artillery forces and their tank forces in fighting in this type of area, in these regions. So what it's happening is that we're seeing the sort of advantage goes to the Russians as they slowly take territory away from the Ukrainians. And it's sad because as we've seen what's going on in Russia, I see that Vladimir Putin really wants to bring back the empire as what's going on in Russia is, is something that needs to be addressed is that they're suffering from a demographic crisis. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, the Russian population not only the fact that their territories that were under the Soviet Union have become independent states, but also that their population has been steadily declining very much quickly. And Vladimir Putin is making this in an important moment as he needs to kind of rebuild this Soviet empire. He needs to rebuild this Russian empire as he sees this sort of demographic crisis that's happening with his, within his nation. And I would like people to let me know down in the comments where I'm wrong, where I am not assessing the situation correctly, and let me know how my reading of the situation is not correct and that I feel that the Ukrainians might take back the territory or the Russians will basically consolidate and take back every piece of pre-Soviet nations and kind of absorb them back into the Russian state. It's sad what's happening, again, awful, awful, what's going on right now in Ukraine. As atrocities, genocide is occurring, there's been examples of men being executed by Russian soldiers uh, who are of fighting age, um, there's been women who have been raped. It's just an awful situation, as it always is with war. And what we're seeing is Russia trying to bring back its old empire. And here, as many of the Ukrainians see them as, as the Russian orcs are flooding in, taking over, stripping them of their identity, and they don't see the Ukrainians as sort of an independent nation. You have to realize that it's been only very much recently that Ukraine broke away and was able to distinguish itself from the Russian people. Yes, they're Slavic. Yes. They've been a far, uh, far longer part of the Russian Empire than they have been independent from them. But again, they have this sort of sense of self-determination. They have this sense of like independence. And they see themselves as distinct from the Russians. But will that last in the future? And that's the problem. Is that it probably won't. What we'll see probably is further and further gains by the Russians as they take territory. So let me know in the comment section down below where I'm wrong. Let me know where my assessment of the situation is incorrect and tell me and please inform me of what you guys think of the whole entire situation. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful day.